Well, grace and peace, beloved, from the God from whom all wisdom comes. Amen. So what is wisdom? Well, here's some quotes from uh, what was considered at the time some wise men. I think there's a world market for maybe five computers. Thomas Watson, chairman of IBM in 1943. Well, this telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. The device is inherently of no value to us. Western Union internal memo from 1876. Well, the concept is interesting and well-formed, but in order to earn better than a C, the idea must be feasible. Well, that's from a Yale University management professor in response to Fred Smith's paper proposing reliable overnight delivery. Well, by the way, Smith went on to found Federal Express. Well, we don't like their sound, and guitar music is on the way out. That's from Decca Recording Company, rejecting the Beatles in 1962. And then everything that can be invented has been invented. Charles H. Duell, Commissioner of the U.S. Office of Patents in 1899. Well, Merriam-Webster defines wisdom as knowledge that is gained by having many experiences in life, the natural ability to understand things that most other people cannot understand, the knowledge of what is proper and reasonable, or good sense of judgment. Well, in modern times, in our technologically advanced world, we highly value knowledge and intelligence over wisdom. For ancient Israel, wisdom traditionally meant the fear of the Lord and knowledge of the Holy One that created all that exists. Well, in, ta in today's scripture reading, uh, scripture is metaphorically describing wisdom as a woman whose life personifies a way of living that is grounded in the knowledge and fear of the Lord. She shows great hospitality to friend and stranger alike by opening her home and preparing a meal for anyone that is willing to lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the ways of insight. Well, we often confuse wisdom with our own self-help or self-knowledge. We live lives that are self-serving, that are filled with indulgence, debauchery, and foolishness. Foolishness is not fearing, loving, and trusting God. Foolishness is scoffing at the voice of God and instead listening to other voices in God's place, including our own voice. Well, wisdom invites, you, invites the unwise to lay aside immaturity. Foolishness invites you deeper into immaturity. Well, foolishness is when we listen to our own voice and go our own way. Or we become distracted by whatever the newest wind to blow our way that tells us who we are, what we should do, or what we should think about. We are easily fooled by contorted arguments and enticing promises. We're easily exploited by turning our hearts and our minds inward away from God God, who is the essence of all truth and wisdom and the source of life. That is foolishness. That is simpleness. And that is death. Instead, the psalmist and the writer of Ephesians encourages you to live differently. Fear the Lord. Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace. Pursue it. Give thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Well, God's wisdom determines how we live in relationship with each other and with God, that source of all wisdom. God's wisdom restores on us the irrevocable relationship between the living Father and the Son, Jesus, the living bread that came down from heaven and lived among us. Jesus, the embodiment of wisdom that gave himself away for the sake of the world, for the sake of you and me. Well, true wisdom is when Christ lives in and through you as you conduct your daily life. The joy of this promise is lived out when you give thanks to God from whom all your blessings come. When you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, you are reminded of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that fills you with the desire and the ability to live as servants of love in God. When we sing together, we express our struggles and our joys, our faith and our doubt, and our thanks. When we sing, we train each other to give voice to the life and faith of our church. Well, wisdom is when you accept the invitation to come to the feast that has been prepared for you. Eugene Peterson's translation, The Message, puts it this way. Lady Wisdom invites everyone within the sound of her voice. Are you confused about life? Don't know what's going on? Come with me. Oh, come, have dinner with me. I prepared a wonderful spread. Fresh baked bread, roast lamb, carefully selected wines. Leave your impoverished confusion and live. Walk up the street to a life with meaning. Well, having wisdom is accepting the invitation to embrace the life that God has designed for you. Jesus is inviting you to a special feast. For eating at this feast will give you life now and eternally. <clears throat> Jesus gives himself fully to you. When you ingest Holy Communion, you are swallowing a tangible promise that Jesus enters your bodies and literally becomes a part of you. You abide with Jesus, and he abides with you. You become one with Christ. Be wise and trust that promise that you carry in your mouths, in your hearts, your minds, your ears, your eyes, your bodies. Well, that promise is heard whenever you hear someone read scripture. Wisdom is feeding you. Whenever you hear someone preach God's good news of Jesus Christ, the foolishness of the cross, wisdom is feeding you. Whenever you gather together in worship, wisdom feeds you. Whenever two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus Christ, he is there comforting you, challenging you, making you wiser. <clears throat> Whenever your heart cries for mercy, God grants forgiveness, liberating you. Whenever we gather together at the table, chewing the bread and drinking the wine, a reminder of Christ's sacrifice, wisdom feeds us. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of that wisdom. A fear of God that is filled with respect and awe and reverence. A fear that reminds you of your place in the world, a mortal created by God. A fear that casts out the fear of death. A fear that leads you to love so that after you are fed, you go out and feed others. You feed hungry bodies, hungry hearts, hungry souls. So be wise. 
Come to the table. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. God welcomes you as you are. Be wise and accept that invitation. And after you have eaten, eaten this feast, as the Reverend Dr. David von Schlichten reminds us, woman wisdom kisses you on the forehead and says, now go out there and feed others as I have fed you. And be sure to come back for more feasting over and over. I never, ever run out of food. Let us pray. God of wisdom, you have filled your people with your spirit. Grant us your wisdom and lead us away from foolishness. We praise you for feeding us with your teaching and your loving relationship with us that daily transforms us again and again, giving us courage to do your will, exhibiting your kingdom reign through the work of our lives, and feeding the world with the bread of life. In the name of Christ, amen.